Well, for us, it meant this. that a lot. It's a very long story. A lot of things happen on the radio, especially with stations like KSTP Radio, which was at 1,500 kilocycles after the war, which made it more difficult to operate a really great and profitable radio station. The transistor radio came along, and the transistor radio had what is known as a non-linear dial, which meant that if you were on the 1,500 end of the dial, you were right close together with other stations on the dial. If you were on the WCCO end of the dial, the stations were all far apart, so you could tune and not have interference. On top of that, the nation was being wired up with high-power transmission lines, and the cities were going, and there were neon signs every place, and these caused interference on the high end of the dial. So what we, what we did was con put our concentration into television, because radio at that time was becoming very difficult where we were located at 1500. Now, I'm happy to say since then, in the last 20 years, radios have gotten better, and now they're linear, and you don't have the interference, and you can hear channel 1500 just as well as you can hear 830. But in the early days of TV, radio was deteriorating, so we put all of our focus, or 90% of it, on television and kind of let the radio slide. But the radio provided the operating cash flow to get the television started. And as the television went up, the radio went down. Because the audiences, of course, stopped sitting around the radio console at night and started sitting around the TV set. And I remember there was a, the RCA distributor here, old F.C. Hare, H-A-Y-E-R, was the RCA distributor. I remember hearing F.C. Hare and my dad arguing. My dad would say, I made it possible for you to TV sets, set tell TV sets. And Hare said, I made it possible for you to get viewers. You know, you know the chicken and the egg. Which was the most important, the guy that sold the sets or the guy that put the program on? equally important.